to this place and that we have this opportunity. I thank you, Lord, for all that you are. And, and Lord, I just worship you for who you are. I pray you touch these that are sick and ill in body today. Move in them. Give them a complete and total healing only as you can. I ask you, Lord, that you touch us in this place in these next few moments and everything that's said and done and in the word that is spoken. Lord, that you would just have your way and you would be glorified. May our worship be pleasing unto you. We give you thanks and we give you honor. We ask you to do these things in the lovely name of Jesus, we pray. Amen and amen. amen. You may be seated if you feel so inclined. It's good to be in the Lord's house on this first Sunday morning. 
of 2022, January the 2nd. Can you say praise the Lord? Come on. That's all right. Give him praise this morning. Amen. I can remember when the first Sunday of the year was a very important Sunday of the year. And I'll, I'll say this, as I don't want to uh, sound like I'm throwing darts at anyone, but in all the years I've been on this earth, I can't tell you where I was every day of the year, but I can tell you every Sunday of my life that I can recall, that I can remember, on the first Sunday of the year, we were in the house of God. Even all those years on the road, it was in the house of God. It's good to be together with God's people. It's good to feel His presence. Good to feel His Spirit. And I have a word for you this morning. I, it, it may be the most unusual as far as the passage that we go to. But back last year and throughout the year, I preached from the book of Genesis. And in November, right at the edge of November, October, I stopped at Genesis 18. And today I want to go to Genesis 19. Because the Lord does all things well. And this was the next portion to fall if I would have continued through Genesis at the time back in the fall. But Genesis 19 falls on the first Sunday of this year for me. And I was reading through that this past week, week and a half. And I've wrestled with it, but I believe this is what God has this morning. This is what he spoke to my heart. Go there with me. We're going to read a few passages. And then please stay with me till the end because we're going to partake of the Lord's Supper together. On this, the first Sunday of 2022, did you think we'd be here by this time? I didn't think we'd be here by this time. I thought the Lord would have surely returned by now. Uh, there were times that I prayed that he would surely return by now. Uh, I can remember several times in high school and college on test days, I prayed, Lord, come quickly. And here we are at 2022. And if we were going to be here in the year 2022, I thought we would be in some futuristic episode like the Jetsons. But I didn't fly to church this morning. I drove. And things are much the same. And that's kind of what I want to bring to your attention this morning. Because how many are looking for change in their life? You're looking for new. And before I begin and even get into this, let me just preface this. There are those things in that newness that we need that only God can give. That's called a divine miracle. When God gives us a miracle you can't change yourself only God can change the heart of a man or a woman but my point is there are some things that are left up to us and I want you to go with me to Genesis the 19th chapter and I know I just had you seated and just remain seated for the reading of the Word of God we'll just read today seated for a few moments but beginning at Genesis chapter 19, at verse 1, it says, Now the two angels came to Sodom in the evening, and Lot was sitting in the gate of Sodom. When Lot saw them, he rose to meet them, and he bowed himself with his face toward the ground. And he said, Here now, my lords, please turn to your servant's house and spend the night and wash your feet, then you may rise early and go your way. And they said, no, but we will spend the night in the open square. But he insisted strongly so that they turned to him and entered into his house. Then he made them a feast and baked unleavened bread, and they ate. Now before they lay down, the men of the city, the men of Sodom, both old and young, all the people from every quarter surrounded the house, and they called to Lot and said to him, where are the men who came to you tonight? Bring them out that we may know them carnally. So the Lord went out, or so Lot went out to them through the doorway and shut the door behind them and said, Please, my brethren, do not do so wickedly. See, now I have two daughters who have not known a man. Please let me bring them out to you. 
and you may do to them as you wish. Only do nothing to these men, since this is the reason they have come under the shadow of my roof. Go with me to verse 23. And in verse 23 it says, Then the sun had risen upon the earth when Lot entered Zor, or Zoar. Then the Lord rained brimstone and fire on Sodom and Gomorrah from the Lord out of the heavens. So he overthrew those cities, all the plain, all the inhabitants of the cities, and what grew in the ground. But his wife looked back behind him. She became a pillar of salt. And Abraham went early in the morning to the place where he had stood before the Lord. Father, anoint my lips to speak, open the ears to hear, Give us grace and give us revelation. Give us direction and divine touch by your word. Touch us in this house this morning. May we praise you and may we worship you in spirit and truth. And I thank you for this day and I thank you for this time together. And I thank you for another Sunday that we come together as community. Touch us, Lord. Speak to hearts that are here. Lord, I just feel impressed, God. Speak to hearts that are here. There are people here that are searching today. There are people here today that need a touch there are people here today that came looking for something. And Lord, I pray today that they find that they're not looking for something, but they're looking for someone. And Lord, that you're here. Touch them, Lord. In Jesus' name I pray. And the church says, amen. Amen. Come on, would you give him praise one more time on this Sunday in the first of the new year? Come on, let's praise him today. Let's honor him. Amen. Genesis chapter 19, get out to the new. Get out to the new. Genesis chapter 19, in retrospect, there's just not a lot of positive elements in the chapter. Didn't say they weren't, there weren't any, but there's not a lot of positive. And I say that because we've just come from 2021 and through 2020, now to 2022, and we look for things to be different. It's a new year. And a new year means a new beginning. Or does it? I say that because let's just be honest and let's be transparent here in the house of God. Uh, really, it's nothing more than the flip of a calendar. Today really feels much like yesterday. Kind of. Except it was 52 this morning at about 5 a.m. And it's going to be in the 30s this afternoon. So it's not summer. Now we went to winter. But you get what I'm saying. I'm talking about as far as the day. It's today's like yesterday. Well, we've assembled here together. We didn't come together yesterday. So that's different. But a new year for most people, we try to make it a new beginning. But is it really a new beginning? Because I say that for most and for some, we'll continue to do the same thing the same way and we'll expect a different result. We'll want all the change and the newness to come, but we won't do anything different in our lives. Some will look to continue to live the same way with the same problems, but they'll look for change and they'll even expect it but they'll continue on the same negative path. And I want to say this today in the beginning. The past can impact the present and the future. I want to say it one more time. The past can impact the present and the future. I understand when we come to know the Lord Jesus Christ, our past is forgiven. Amen. It's all under the blood. And, and, and God has forgiven us of all the sin and all of the things that we've done, and, and we've turned from that, and we walk a different path. But do you understand? Repentance just doesn't mean saying you're sorry. Repentance means that God shows you grace, and he forgives you, but that you walk a different way. Because repentance actually means to turn from. But God has changed us. I get that. We are made new. 
I'm not the same creature that I was before I met Jesus. How many can say amen? Come on now. Let, let, let's honor the Lord this morning. I'm not the same person that I was before I found his grace and his mercy and his forgiveness. And listen to me here. Listen closely. Because here's the problem. What happens is Christians, we look to a new beginning. We look to a new year for a new beginning. But the only one that brings a new beginning is Jesus Christ. 2022 will change nothing for you like what Jesus can do in your life. But here's the issue. Christians are living with the same problems and the same hang-ups in the same old manner and in the same old way that they have for years. Now, pardon me here, is it okay? There, there's two ways of looking at this. The two ways of looking at this is to be a pastor means you care for one soul. You shepherd, like parenting. Secondly, there's also those people who meddle in your business. So what I'm about to say can be looked at in one or two ways. I'm either being a pastor or I'm meddling in your business. And quite frankly, some people need their business meddled in. Boy, it's quiet. I think I'll preach a while. Here's the thing. If you still have the same problems and going into 2022 and you expect everybody to apologize to you, but you're the perpetrator, 2022 is not going to change anything for you. Amen. If you still have strife and contention in your family and you are the child of God who, according to Matthew chapter 5, is called to be the peacemaker and you're not going to make peace, 2022 is not going to change for you. If you still burn everything that you cook, and you won't follow a recipe. <laughs> and you won't listen to everybody around you that says it does not taste good. 2022 is not going to change anything for you. You can still be a bad cook. You can still be a person with animosity in your heart. You can still be a person living in unforgiveness. Now listen, if it's going to get squeamish for you, this might be the time to leave right now. I I'm just being honest. I'm being open here because we look at 2022 and there are people that are going to stand in pulpits today and they're going to give all kinds of synopsis and they're going to give all kinds of things for a new year and how things are going to change and they're going to give all kinds of vision statements and the thing is, is by June, nobody will remember those words. Nobody will remember anything that happened. That vision will long be something that was just an ambition of man. See, folks, what I'm trying to tell you today, if you want to change, change starts right now with Jesus Christ. If you want something new, newness starts right now in Jesus Christ. If you're tired of the way you're living, newness starts right now in Jesus Christ. If you've grown cold and indifferent, come on and get in a little closer to him and draw close unto him because the word says when you draw close unto God, he will draw close unto you. You draw nigh unto God, he'll draw nigh unto you. So if you need something more, what you need to do is not pray for 2022 to be the better year and for you to find something new in 2022. You need to walk in the newness of life that God has given you and pray and look to God because only through Jesus Christ is there newness of life. And I said the past can impact the present and the future. Impact is influence. Influence. It's important. Some have it, some don't. Some are impacted by influence. Influencers are all around us. The media, politics, music, literature, art, all can impact an individual. We know this. However, one may fail to see just how much this world influences one's Christianity. I want to say that one more time. I, I want you to hear me. I realize there can always be distractions in a service because I know I see them, but I don't concentrate on them. I concentrate on doing what God has called me to do. 
And, and, and here's the thing, and I'm not talking about it, it just in today's service. I'm talking about every service. If you, if you want anything to be different in your life and specifically in your walk with Christ, then you need to focus on him every moment. of it. Don't let distractions take your attention away from what God is trying to speak to you right now. Because what I want to make the point is people need to see just how much this world can influence one's Christianity. And I'm going to show you this. The environment and that place in which one lives, literally and metaphorically, can have influence on them. And, and we, we, we don't realize just how much the influence is from the past and how much we have the past influencing the present because I will tell you, the environment, all of those things, and where we live Metaphorically and literally, they have an influence on us, but I'm going to say something here that addiction is running wild. And when I say addiction is running wild, we've got so many people living in the church that are addicted to the past. Uh-oh. It may have been something I said. Many people are addicted to the past so much that they cannot let it go. If we'd only do what we used to do, we'd see God move like he used to. Well, if you're still doing what you used to do, why ain't God still moving on you like he used to? Amen. We got so many people addicted to the past. And we've got a new generation that has never seen the past. And there's nothing wrong with letting the past have influence on us to where it directs our course in the present. But we must remember, we've got a generation right now that didn't live through what we've lived through. They don't know. They haven't experienced the presence and the power of God like some have in the past. And we've got to get past the past and keep moving forward. And just with that, we've got to... We cannot be so addicted to our environment or the place where we live that we let it influence us more than we let God influence us. In Genesis 19, let me get to it. It's a challenging passage to preach from. There's not a lot of positive elements to emphasize. This is one of those passages that does not fit the mainstream mentality of our culture. The majority do not want to hear a message about holiness, but only God's grace. And all of these things have their place in teaching and doctrine. But we must have perspective. Because I want to show you something from Genesis 19 about the newness today. I don't want to know about a God that is full of grace but is not holy because he might favor others. I don't, I don't want to know a God that is full of grace but not holy because if he's full of grace but he's not holy, his character might be changed by people he might favor you more than he favors me i don't want to know a god about a god that is full of grace but is not holy because he might show favor to only a few because his character is not holy i don't want to know a god that is loving but does not exercise judgment i don't want to meet too many parents that are loving but don't exercise judgment you didn't say amen and you know why you didn't say amen? Because we all know where we're living right now. We're living in an age where parents are the best friend but don't exercise judgment. We're reaping the seeds that we have sown. We're seeing what has come to fruition from the church of the last 20 years. I don't want to know a God that is loving but does not exercise judgment because this world around me would be in chaos and my soul would be in danger of demise. If the God I serve and the Lord Jehovah was a God that was only loving but not a God of judgment, that means I could do anything I want to do and still be his but that's not what his word said his word does not portray and peter said it best he said that we should be holy because god is holy in him there is no shadow of turning paul also said he wrote he said come follow me as i follow christ there must be an example but i don't want to know a god that is loving but does not exercise judgment because the world would be in chaos more than it is and my soul could be in danger of demise. 
This is why we need perspective. Don't lean to one attribute of God without keeping in mind that He is God. And He cannot be shaped by merely what you want Him to be. So in chapter 19, let me get to this. Lot is visited by two angels. And they've come with a purpose to destroy the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah. It's the judgment of God. And while there's much discourse on this chapter, there's some things to examine concerning this event. Go back with me just to chapter 19, verse 1 for a moment. Now the two angels came to Sodom in the evening. Lot was sitting in the gate of Sodom. When Lot saw them, he rose to meet them. He bowed himself with his face toward the ground. Now let's backtrack just for a moment because I want to put this in perspective. There's a positive element here, and there's something positive that I want to point out to you. But let's recall, if we go back, that Abraham and Lot had to separate. There was a family squabble. They couldn't get along. He said the land's not big enough to support both families. Lot sees the plains over by Sodom, and he says they look good. They look appealing to the eye. But the only problem is, Scripture's already told us that the deeds of those people over there were exceedingly wicked. Everybody knew what they were all about, but the land looks good. So Lot goes his way, casts his tent there. Now remember, Colodomer, the king, made an alliance with some other kings. And all of those, I believe the kings of the east, they came against Sodom and all those surrounding territories. They overtook him. So Lot's already been a victim of Sodom one time previously, right? Because he's been taken captive. And after Abram goes and frees him from captivity because Abram with just his household defeats a whole alliance of kings, Lot still sees fit to go back to where? Sodom. Hold that thought. Because I know we could sit here and we could, we could beat up on Lot about this, but let's just be honest with ourselves. God has told us to move a time or two, but we keep going back to the same old place we're familiar with. Amen. I, listen, I have learned some things. And, and I know this is probably not the best analogy, but this is one I can give you. In the last year, I, I had a lot of gastrointestinal issues uh, after COVID and, and at the first of last year. But the thing is, there were foods I had to watch. And there were some foods that just absolutely, when I'd eat them, they would just absolutely terrorize my system. Hold on. No, no, now hear me. And when, when, when you're in pain, and you know what I'm talking about here. There may be people here. When you, when you have the pain that wakes you up in the middle of the night, you think, I'll never do that again. Until that which you've ingested is something that you dearly, dearly love. And the doc told me, he gave me all the list of, of things. He said, you know, you probably, are you a sweet eater? I'm thinking. Are you serious? You might want to lay off some of the chocolate because it's acidic. I would love to tell you that I'm not like Lot. Oh, Lot went back to Sodom when he's already felt the effects of Sodom. I'd love to tell you, say, I didn't stick another piece of candy in my mouth. No, 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 no. I did what all good Christians do. I prayed for God to heal me. And when the doctor gave me the pill, I'm like, I've got God ready to heal me. I've got the pill that's ready to cure me. I'm going to go ahead and eat the chocolate. Oh, see, you're laughing. You know what I'm talking about. You, you, so you know what I'm saying. You got high cholesterol, but you think, I'll just take another uh, pill and I'll eat another fried catfish filet. Mm, amen. See, you laughed at me. You're not laughing at that. Because we sit here and we think, how in the world could Lot do that? How do we do it? We do it in the smallest things. We do it in the greatest things. Lot's already been a victim of Sodom once before. And now he's back at Sodom. He's sitting at the gate. Two angels show up. And these two angels are there. You know why they're there? This is something people don't always want to focus and emphasize. But these two angels are there because of the grace of God. The grace of God is extended to Lot where if you read the chapter, they, the angels tell them, you need to get out of here and get your family out of here. Grace 
is exhibited by the angels appearing to warn Lot. They inform Lot to take his family and leave. That's called grace. Grace for Lot and his family does not stop the impending destruction that is coming to the cities. Now, I want you to understand, grace that is coming to Lot does not stop the judgment of God. You say, what do you, what do you mean, Pastor? I'm saying this, that this chapter could have ended a lot differently if Lot would have disobeyed after he'd had the grace of God extended to him and he would have stayed where he was at. Because the grace of God did not stop the impending judgment that was coming upon Sodom and Gomorrah. Grace is freely given. But grace has parameters. This is something we don't like to talk about. And what I mean here is that grace can be given and extended from God. You didn't earn it. Somebody say amen. You don't earn his grace. It's unmerited favor. You didn't earn it. But to experience the deliverance that grace brings, you've got to walk in it. God does not, he gives you his grace. He fully bestows you. There's today, people have been given the grace of God today, but they do not act upon it. They don't live in it. They take it for granted. And in our postmodern culture, people have called it cheap grace. They've called it easy grace, whatever you want to call it. But the point is they take advantage of the grace of God because grace has parameters. God gives grace. It's unmerited. You do nothing to earn it. But that deliverance that grace brings, you must walk in it. Grace requires Lot and his family to leave the state of sin. But not everyone wants to accept the grace that requires defecting from sin. And while Lot experiences the grace of God, there's something more to be understood. Second thing is this, is there's the impact of Sodom, a place of corruption. Notice this. Lot was aware of the condition of Sodom. And he was suspicious of the people. How do we know that? We know that from this passage. We know that because the two angels said, we're going to go lodge in the square. And Lot said, no, 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 no. You come into my house. Why? Because he knew who they were. He knew what they were about. Church, I'm just going to say something to you today. You cannot play with fire and not get burned. If you know what something is about, and listen to me, we've got younger people in this congregation this morning that are in here with us. If you know what something's about, if you know who so, how someone is, if you know what they're like, and you know enough about their character, and you know it's not where you should be, you better leave them alone. Witness to them, love them, but it does not mean that light partakes in fellowship with darkness. Lot was aware of the condition of Sodom. He was suspicious of the people. Thus, Lot encouraged the two men, the angels. I say men in quotes, the angels, not to go to the square of Sodom, but to lodge in his home. Secondly, when the men of the city came to Lot's house desiring to have angels turned over to them, Lot offers his daughters. Now, here's the thing. This is, this is where I, I got to touch on this point. I got to move quickly. But he offers his daughters strange, strange. And if we go so far, weird. He offers his daughters. See, Scripture states in Exodus 21, 22, and then Leviticus 19, 3 through 4, that... A host, one should take care of their guest when someone comes into their home. But let's not forget the ever command that Scripture also instructs that parents should care for and instruct their children. Let me say it again. Scripture instructs us that parents should care for and instruct their children. And when these come desiring the angels to be turned over to them, Lot says, no, I've got two daughters. Lot's offering up his daughters not under the influence of Scripture. He's offering up his daughters under the influence of Sodom. Hello. Listen, if we're not cautious, we will begin to act 
and react like the world around us rather than what Scripture dictates. Godly people can do ungodly things. No, it, it, it's, it's a strange occurrence here. He offers them up, not under the influence of Scripture, but under the influence of Sodom. So remember this. Lot's wife then turns back longing for Sodom. We say, how can somebody, how can somebody offer up their children? Well, how do we do it in this culture? We tell them serving God isn't important. We put more emphasis on what happens on the baseball diamond than what happens in the home. Mm. See, I, I'm speaking to you this morning because we always talk, we want things to be different in 2022. We want things to be different in the new year. But we don't like to face the fact sometimes that there's things in our lives that have to change. And it doesn't need a divine miracle to change. It needs us to walk in the newness of life. And Lot's wife turns back longing for Sodom, thus the impact or influence of Sodom. Then we find further on, and I'm, I'm, I'm just going to give you a, a bullet point here. We find later on here that after Lot escapes... He ends up drunk. And, and while Sodom and Gomorrah symbolizes a place of corruption, the things that have a tendency to hold on to one or those that become one's addictions can be anything that impedes you from the life that God has for you to live. I've got to close here because we've got to we've got to partake of communion this morning. But let me close with a point. Don't let the Sodom of this world have greater influence on you. And and here is. Here's where it gets uh, applicable to our lives today. See, if you want things new, you've got to get out of Sodom to get to the new. That which impedes your life. It can be corruption. Because it is corrupt in your way of life. But don't let Sodom influence your actions. You know how much this world influences our actions? This world influences our actions so much is that when somebody does it to us, we do it back to them. Or because somebody did it to us and we have a friend or a neighbor or a friend or maybe even a church member that tells us, oh, well, you have a right to feel the way you feel, then we go on and we pose our own judgment. Folks, I, I would love to tell you that, that in the church that everything is influenced by God, but it's, it's not the case. It should be. It needs to be. But I'm concerned that we've let Sodom, we've let the world influence our actions. Because, see, Lot was more concerned about being a good host rather than getting out of an ungodly place. And, and, and when people come into the church, I think sometimes we're more concerned about making them feel comfortable and about making them feel welcome than letting the Holy Spirit be welcome in our midst. We'll sit on our hands. We'll look around. We'll find something else to do. We'll pray that nothing happens that will upset them or disturb them. Oh, folks, we need a move of God right now that will shake this world. We need a move of God that will change it. And we don't need a move of God that will just change this world. We need a move of God that will shake the church and change the people of God. The influence of actions. If people are more concerned about being a good host rather than getting out of the ungodly place, this world has influenced your actions. 
Don't let this world influence your actions. Don't let this world influence your mentality. Lot was willing to offer his daughters. He was willing to do what Sodom had taught him more than what Scripture, what God's Word, what he knew of God, what God had spoke to him. God's sending him grace right here to get out. But he's willing to offer his daughters. Don't let the world influence your mentality. I say this because nothing will be new this year if you keep living the same mentality that you lived in 2021. The next point goes along with it before I close. Don't let this world influence your family. I'm not sure, I, I'm, I'm just being transparent here, I'm not sure where we're at as far as the body of Christ in this earth today. I'm really not. And when I say that, I know this sounds old fogey and it may sound old fashioned, but it seems that there are people that long more for the things of this life than they do for the things of God. There's not a reason that every church in Natchez today should not be packed. There's not a reason that every church across this nation should not be packed. I really don't understand this. I, there, there's some, I won't go far because if I go too far, I know someone will get offended. And I, I don't want it to sound like my personal perspective. But we cannot let this world influence our family. I told Angela last night we were talking about this. When we have to dismiss church here, and no one likes to dismiss services, but my daughter wants to know why. If there's six inches of ice on the ground, why are we dismissing church? And that may sound strange, but I would rather her be that way then they think, oh, well, we could stay at home. We, we went on vacation and went to church. I found some place to go. I'm not saying you have to, but I, I've, I've got an 11-year-old daughter that just don't understand why Christians don't go to church on Sunday. And it's hard for me to make her understand, honey, everybody's not committed some people are influenced more by this world than they are by God. And it's not just about church attendance. But if what we do, our actions, our works, because faith without works is dead. But if our works are an indication of that we live for God, then what is church attendance about? See, it doesn't make you a Christian. But I certainly believe that Christians should want the community and the assembling of the body. Don't let this world influence your family. Because we, we wonder and we get concerned when we have a generation that's more concerned about looking back outside the church rather than looking inside the church. And that was Lot's wife. Listen, God had sent deliverance, had He not? Two angels brought grace. God has sent deliverance. Deliverance had come, and all Lot's wife can do is not look forward to deliverance, but she looks back to want to go back to where she came from. Don't let this world influence your family. If you want the new, you've got to look to God. And don't let this world influence your holiness. I believe that Christians need to be separated from the world. And I know we're in this world. We're not of it. But people say, well, where's the fine line? Well, it, 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 
shouldn't be a fine line. I mean, we come into this place today. That's why we call it a sanctuary because it's not that we're better than anybody, but this, this is a place that is separated. Now, everybody here may not be a child of God, and you're welcome here if you're not a child of God. That's not what I mean, but this is a place where we've dedicated, and we don't do everything like they do out there. Amen. You, you, you didn't have to worry about coming in here if you could bring your family in here. I mean, th this is, this is G-rated for God. Don't let this world influence your holiness. As I close, bottom line is this, be cautious. Because none of us are infallible. This world can impair our judgment. But today I'm thankful that I serve a God that is greater than anything in this world. And He will keep us when we keep our eyes on Him. And I know this is unusual for this morning. This is different for the first Sunday morning. But church, we've got to move forward in this year. God's people are meant to progress, not regress. And I say that in retrospect and in meaning, I don't know what this year holds. I, I don't know. I can't tell you that it's going to be better than last year. I'm not going to get up here and like so many did at the beginning of 2020 and preached on 2020 vision and how God has perfect vision for the coming year. And we know what 2020 was. I'll just be honest with you. I'm tired of all the dime sermons and the philosophical dribble that we try to create and make palatable for people and nothing changes in our lives nothing we, we, we're still the same as we were and nothing's changed and we're not growing and I don't mean as a congregation I mean as people God has so much more for us. He's extended grace to us. He's called us out from among them. And what He wants us to do is to walk in the newness of His Word and in His life. Father, I thank You for this day. I thank You, Lord, for all that You've done, and I thank You for all that You're doing. I pray, Lord Jesus, give me grace for this hour. Touch us, Lord. Father, I pray, speak to us and speak to our hearts. I pray, encourage us, Lord. There's always grace. But, Lord, we have to walk in grace. And, Lord, if we want the newness of life, God, there are some things that are left up to us. You extend your grace, but we have to accept and walk in it. Lord, I just pray today, touch, Lord, each and every heart and each and every life that's under the sound of my voice. Speak to them today. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. With heads bowed and eyes closed, just for a moment, please just bear with me. If you're here today and you're not where you should be with the Lord Jesus Christ, if that is you, would you slip your hand up and write back down quickly? God sees and God knows. going to come to you and embarrass you, but if you're here today and you wish to make the step, grace has been extended to you today, you're here, but you wish to make the step and come to the altar, come to the front, this is your time. We wait just for a moment. You're here. Would you come? Spirit of the Lord is in this place. Touch us, Lord Jesus. Lord, I pray you touch these today. Lord, the hand that went up, God, I just pray that you speak to that person. 
Lord, I've done what I know to do. I just ask you, Lord, do what only you can do and change them, Lord Jesus. I love you, Lord. I ask this in the lovely name of Jesus, I pray. Thank you, Lord. Still